Alright guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we'll be showing you how to make this part in SolidWorks as you see on screen. Basically, it's just a simple basic part, easy for beginners. If you guys want to learn, this will be pretty simple for you guys to begin with. Basically, we have a hollow little part inside with kind of like a peg or a ring. This is how it looks without real view graphics, without shaded. Yep, pretty simple. And basically, that's what we'll be making today. So let's go ahead and open a new part. Go up here in in this kind of like a house, and you'll see this window. Go ahead and click on part. And basically we get a new kind of like a workspace open down here on the bottom right corner um, we want this in millimeter so we'll select MMGS millimeter gram and second and that's what that's the units that we'll be working in so to start off we want to go ahead and select our front plane and right click on it and we want to click on normal 2 go ahead and right click on it again and click on sketch now the first step is to create kind of a square or a rectangle so up here in our sketch toolbar we want to click on this arrow and click on center rectangle if it's not already selected go ahead and go into these arrows these arrows what basically they are they're our origin so you want to click on the origin and you want to drag out the rectangle dimensions don't matter right now so just go ahead and click again to make that rectangle click on escape or click on the check mark on the left side to get rid of that manager design tree and next up here on our sketch toolbar you want to click on smart dim dimension go ahead and click on one side and basically what this is going to do is gonna it's gonna give a dimension and we want this side to be 120 millimeters go ahead and type that in 120 into the modify box and click on the check mark so now that is that has a length of 120 millimeters go ahead and click on the right side or the left side whichever you want click to place and click on 120 millimeters and click on the check mark. So basically we have a 120 millimeter by 120 millimeter uh, square. When it's all black, that means it is fully defined. You cannot make a part um, with blue, blue lines. That means it's undefined or underdefined. And basically your lines will be constantly moving if you add new ones or if you edit other ones. So you always have to make sure that your lines become this color. That means it will be fully defined. Now next up is to extrude this. So we want to go into features and click on extrude boss forward slash base. And we get this view. Now this is going to be 30 millimeters. So we want extrusion of 30. Go ahead right here into D1 and change that to 30 millimeters and you have to make sure that this direction one this condition is selected at blind so if it's not just go ahead and drop that down and click on blind next up click OK and there we have our first basically section or our first element to this design we have like a, a square which is a 120 by 120 extruded at 30 or a thickness of 30. So the next step is to make a circle over this face. We're going to hover our cursor over this face, right click and click on normal two. Go ahead and right click again and click on sketch. This opens up another sketch in our manager design tree. And up here in our sketch toolbar, we click on circle. We go into our origin, click, drag, and click again. 
dimensions don't matter here as we're going to go ahead and click on smart dimension up here and this is going to have a diameter of 70. So I'm in the modify box we just type in 70 and click on OK. So now we have a circle with a diameter of 70. Next up we want to extrude this circle um, to 25 millimeters. So click on features click on extruded boss slash base go ahead and for a better view click on isometric up here in the toolbar in view orientation and you click on isometric so we have that better view in direction one make sure you have it in blind and in direction one you also want to type in 25 millimeters so that's going to have a thickness of 25 millimeters click on OK and there we have it Now the next step is to make another circle, but this circle is going to cut through the whole part. And we're going to make that in this face. So we're going to go ahead and click on that face, right click and click on normal two. Right click again and click on sketch. Now here, we're not going to make a circle, but we're going to find kind of like a shortcut. We're going to go into our sketch toolbar, click on offset entities. And here in parameters, we're going to change. We're going to keep that distance to 10 millimeters. If it's not in 10 millimeters, then change it to 10 millimeters. Now you want to click on this circle, and it's basically what this is going to do is going. It's going to create another circle that's going to be 10 millimeters apart. Now this yellow circle is going to be our new circle, but we want the new circle to be inside the the previous one. So we're going to go ahead and click on reverse. So there we go. We have that smaller circle and it's going to be 10 millimeters apart from our previous circle that we made. Go ahead and click OK. Now we have the smart dimension automatically and we have that at 10 millimeters. So these are 10 millimeters apart. If we wanted to check the diameter, we'll just go ahead and click on smart dimension and we have a diameter of 50 millimeters. So Next, we want to go to Features, and we want to click on Extrude to Cut. Like I said, this is a cut, not a, an extrusion boss base. We're going to go ahead and change to Isometric. And here in Direction 1, we want to click on the option for Through All. And basically, that's going to cut all the way through our part. Go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, we have a perfect circle all the way through from the start to the end. Now next up we want to add some fillets. Fillets are basically like rounded edges. To do this we go into features and we click on fillet. Now we're gonna this is going to pop this. Our fillet type we want a constant size fillet. If it's not there just click on it. And under items to fillet we want to select this face. So basically we're going to be filleting or rounding these four edges, including the edge here for the circle. Now we want to round also these edges. So we're going to click on all four of those. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Click on isometric for a better view. Now scroll down and here on radius, we want to change that to 5 millimeters. So we changed it to 5 milliliter millimeters and let's go ahead and click OK. And there you go. We have these rounded edges that look pretty nice, such as a corner and these edges. And it also rounded this circle edge. Next we want another edge on this edge and this edge. So let's go into our features, fillet, make sure it's on constant size fillet. In items to fillet, we want to select this face. And for our radius, we want to have it at 1.50 millimeters. There you go. Click on OK. And there we have it. We got the inside 
such as the outside, rounded, and filleted. The next part is to hollow out the back side of the piece. So we're going to go ahead and right click on the back side. We're going to go ahead and click on normal 2. And up here in our features, we're going to click on shell. Now we want a thickness of 2 millimeters. So here in parameters, we're going to change that 10 millimeter value to 2 millimeters. Here, we're going to select this box. This is going to be faces to remove and we want to remove this face. So we're going to click on that. We have face one selected. Now that we have face one selected, we could press OK. And there you go. Basically what we did here was hollow out the back side as we can see. Now that two millimeter value was basically the thickness of all sides or the whole piece. To make sure that it has that thickness, we can go ahead and measure it with the evaluate function. Go ahead and go to evaluate and click on measure. Now click on this line and this line and we can see that here we have a distance of two millimeters. So basically this whole piece has a distance of or a thickness of two millimeters. Go ahead and give it a isometric view once again. Now we can also use section view to have a better view of that hollowing. So let's go ahead and click on section view up here and drag down. We want to click on right plane and it's already a halfway. So let's go ahead and click OK. And here we have a better view or like a mid view of what that hollowing did. So this is a way to make sure that we want the proper hollowing for our part. To remove hollowing, just press on the function again and it'll return to its normality. Now the next thing is just for practice, we want to edit. If we want to edit certain values, we can go ahead and do that. If we want to edit the thickness of this part, all we have to do is go into our design manager tree, double click on boss extrude. And as we can see, we have all these dimensions that we already established before. Kind of fit in a way we have that 30 dimension right here. And we want to change that to 50. To do that, all we do is just double click. And we want to in the modify box, we want to type in 50. And we want to click on the check mark. And basically, that dimension is changed to 50 millimeters. So it basically now has a 50 millimeter. But right now, we are not seeing it on our screen. It still has that 30 millimeter thickness. To actually view that, we want to go up here in the, into standard toolbar and click on rebuild or with the shortcut control plus B. So let's go ahead and click on that and there you go. Our thickness has changed. We have a 50 millimeter thickness instead of that 30 thickness. Now the next part is if we want to remove certain fillets and modify its value, um, we could go ahead and do that. And this specifically we want these removed and we want these changed. Now we go into fillet 1 because that's where all of these fillets are. We go ahead and right click it and edit feature. Now we want to remove these fillets. These, fa these fillets were selected with the face. So we're going to go ahead and left click face, right click it and click on delete. Basically what that does, it deletes those fillets as we can see. And now we want these edge fillets to be 10 millimeters instead of 5. Go ahead and go into fillet parameters, change its radius, and click OK. And there we go. Our fillets are now bigger with 10 millimeters. So now we want these fillets back, let's just say, but we want them with a different value. We could go ahead and do that by going to our feature manager design tree and then 
holding this bar, this blue bar here, and dragging it up between shell one and fillet two. Go ahead and release, and now we could fill it. So basically, we will be working after fillet two and before shell one. If we were working after or adding fillet three after shell one, our new fillets wouldn't be shelled. But we do want shelled fillets, so we'll go ahead and drag that bar before shell one. So now we want to add that fillet. Go ahead and go into features, click on fillet. Make sure your fillet type is constant size fillet. Items to fillet is going to be this face once again. Now our in fillet parameters, change your radius to five millimeters. And go ahead and click OK. So there you go. We have these smaller fillets with our big 10 millimeter edge fillets here. So if you want to keep working this part, all you have to do is drag that blue bar back down here in the feature manager design tree. Go ahead and release and there you go. Now next up is adding material and a real view graphics. This is what it gives it more of a realistic view. Now for beginners or when you're starting, you're not going to have this function in your toolbar. So what you want to do to add that, you want to go up here into tools. Go ahead and go down. Click on this arrow and when you come to customize, you want to click that. Here you want to click on commands and under categories, you want to scroll down all the way to view. In here, under buttons, you will have all these buttons. In here is a real view graphics um, button. And all you want to do is go ahead and drag and drop this button into anywhere you want. I recommend this. I recommend having this button here where I put it just so it'd be easier to add. Um, it duplicated it, so we could just put that back to click on OK. And now once you have this button here on your screen, we could go ahead and click on shaded. So basically this removes these lines. Looks gives it more of a smooth finish. Click on real view graphics and basically it gives it and basically it gives it more of a realistic view. Kind of more of a glossy finish. So now to add a material, which is what we want, we want to go to the feature manager design tree, go ahead and hover over part one and right click. Here you get a menu and you go over to material and then edit material. Now here you have all certain types of materials. These are solid work materials. You have steel, iron, aluminum alloys, copper alloys, titanium alloys, and all other up all the way to woods so let's go ahead and drop down the steel menu and we have all these certain steels carbon steel sheet all the way to rod stainless steel the one we want is chrome so let's go ahead and look for that one here it is chrome stainless steel this is the material we want we get all this information such as elastic modulus Poison's ratio, shear modulus, man's density, and all these others. We don't need that right now, but we want to click on apply. Once you click that, we want to click on close. And there you go. Our material is applied to our part. So as real view graphics. And basically this is how it ends up looking, giving it more of a chromatic finish with those reflections as in would be let's just say in real life realistically and basically this is it well hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys learned something about catting here in SOLIDWORKS um, please stay tuned for the next lesson and I'll see you guys in the next video Thank you.